Hello, welcome everyone. I believe it's time to start and I'm really, really happy to see you. Uh, it's the first live conference I'm attending after a year and a half. Uh, so it's great to be here and uh, great to see some faces because usually, I mean, after, uh, 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 during this uh, last month, I've been giving uh, remote talks. I mean, talking to a camera is uh, much, much worse than talking to you live, believe me. Although I'd like to welcome all of, us, all of these people who are watching us uh, online. Uh, uh, we'll be doing that later. So for the record, the title of this presentation is Java Records for the Intrigued. I guess you are the Intrigued ones. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. Um, so shortly about me, my name is uh, Piotr Przybył. Uh, I am uh, working as a software gardener uh, and occasionally as a trainer. I blog uh, at softwaregarden.dev and I work in Atomic Jar. Um, so even when I'm on holiday, provided there is a holiday, uh, Java is somewhere behind me, so I can't really get rid of it from my life, apparently. Um, so the question is, who are you? And I'm really like, you know, would like to know how many of you are like from Poland? Okay, is there anyone coming from like abroad? Ah, still a few souls. Yeah, that's great. Hello, welcome. Uh, and yeah, one more question, one more question. If you open your computer uh, and you start uh, a comment like this, which Java version do you see? Do you also have 16 installed? Ah, uh, not so many people. Okay, that's, uh, that's pity. Uh, I hope we'll get through that. Uh, I mean, during this session, I'll be talking uh, on the records exclusively. The next one after the break is about the other good stuff that happened to Java recently, or will happen in uh, just a month. Uh, before we really start, caveat auditores, please remember everyone can make a, mis a mistake, including myself. So being on the stage doesn't mean you are not able to commit, uh, I would say, something stupid. Um, so records, uh, what are records? Records are a standard feature now from Java uh, 16, so you can have them if you enable a, um, a so-called uh, preview feature in Java 14, or you can use, for example, Jable or something uh, like that. So they were introduced formally in Java 16 uh, as JEP 395. So there's a link uh, uh, for, for the whole specification. If you'd like to read the specs, uh, you're welcome. And so what the record is, record is a new kind of type declaration, okay? Um, and it is a restricted form of a class and extends Java lang record. And if you take a look at these three points, it looks somewhat similar to enum uh, we saw in Java 5 or 1.5, depending on how you number the, the versions, right? So in, b before Java uh, 5, we didn't have enums. They were introduced uh, in hopefully Asian ver uh, version for, for you today. Uh, and we have enums, and they all extend Java Lang enum, right? And so is the, for the records. So in this way, they are somewhat similar to each other. And this is like um, a short quote from one of the JEPs, uh, I believe. Uh, so records are meant as transparent carriers for immutable data. So there are a few important like thoughts hidden here in this short sentence. So first, they are, they sh they're supposed to be transparent, right? Uh, and they are carriers, so basically just like, I don't know, a boxes or containers or whatever we, we say. And they are meant for immutable data, right? So we need to keep that in mind during the uh, next minutes when we'll be analyzing them. Um, and this is how records look like, right? So um, it's not that much complicated. You see this uh, record. So we, instead of class, we're saying that this is going to be a record. Then we have a, a name of the class, name of the record. And then we go with so-called header part, which has all these properties or, or record components, to be precise. And then we can have a body, or we always need to have a body, even if it's an empty one. So basically, this is the bare minimum to have a record. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, this was uh, uh, a little joke. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, do that. Uh, uh, to keep on going. So what records have? Do you know what records have? Obviously, they have a name. 
right? We saw in previous examples they have a name like complex. So that's what makes them different. For example, anonymous tuples in many languages, Scala, for example. Uh, record have components. In previous example, we saw two components, like the real and imaginary part. Uh, and this, that might be surprising. The number of components can be zero, and sometimes it makes sense. I mean, these cases aren't that much popular, but still they may exist. Uh, these components eventually become private final fields, and they have generated accessors. We'll get to accessors in a, in a second. And they also have generated full canonical constructor, and they have the equals hash code and two string methods generated for us. And they also have the body, even if it's an empty one. You can't you know, um, get rid of the braces. It won't compile, basically. Uh, so what records can? They can redefine constructors, or we can redefine constructors in, uh, in uh, our records, the records we uh, declare. Um, they might have their own implementations of generated methods. So despite equals being generated for us, we may decide to override it due to whatever reason, and that should, of course, be a valid reason. And they should still obey the invariant or rules, I mean these old implementations, meaning if we override an accessor, it should still behave, basically. And they might have extra methods, and they can have static fields and methods, and they can implement interfaces, and they can be generic. Okay? What, re what records can't is that they cannot be extended, or they cannot extend anything. Basically, they are always final, and they always implicitly extend the Java lang record, and that's all that when it comes to like extending uh, in records, right? And they cannot have setters unless we have you know methods mutating the components which are inside the components are mutating. But that's remember, it's not the transparent carry of immutable data, right? And they can ha they cannot have any extra instance fields. Um, they cannot have less visible canonical constructors, like, I don't know, private constructor, uh, when their record is uh, public, for example, and they cannot declare um, native uh, methods. Basically, they cannot do anything that would expose this state at risk, so to say, that immutability of the state which is kept inside this transparent carrier for immutable data, right? Um, what, uh, a bit more about records, and this is one of the things that was, you know, when Java 14 was released, it was uh, like late winter previous year. So, of course, we had all the news and media about the COVID and so on. And Java World was pretty much excited about uh, records being published as the first preview, right? And some people were tweeting like, uh, okay, so what are these records? And the other were replying, oh, records are basically Java beans. And then there were answers, no, they are not Java beans. They don't have setters. So some were saying, yeah, they're ja like Java beans only without setters. That's not true. You will see that in code, that records are not Java beans. Basically, records are records. Records are just POJOs, plain old Java objects, with accessors without getters, basically. And you can think of them as named tuples. So for example, when you do a SQL select query, we usually uh, say that we get rows in, uh, as a result, right? But actually, this is the way th they get presented, I mean, these results in a form of a table, hence we say they are rows. Actually, they are tuples. Like in Scala, we also have tuples, right? So records are named tuples. They have their own name and type. And uh, they are not deeply immutable. So it's not working like, I don't know, cons in C++ or something like this, so we can say, or protects, I don't know, an area, uh, some area in memory that it won't be uh, mutable in any way. It's not going to happen. So the field becomes uh, final, right? But if it's mutable, you can mutate it. Uh, so this, uh, this is how it works. And uh, sometimes they require overriding equals and hash code. Because some people keep saying that they, they generated equals and hash code is always the right one. I would say there might be some situations when you need to override them. Uh, but most of the time, I agree, it's an indication of a bad smell that something somewhere went quite wrong if you need to override equals or hash code in your record uh, class. OK, uh, so much about boring slides. Uh, we'll go to the code, right? I mean, we developers trust the code. We don't trust. Uh, BS coming from uh, from uh, slides. Okay, everything you see here is online. Okay, so you can uh, like uh, clone the repository later, play, no, play on your own, and so on and so on. And of course, if you have any questions, please ask them uh, ASAP. 
All right, so we have a simple method, a uh, simple uh, demo of, of uh, records. Uh, let me just run it, and as you can see, it, it compiles and it works. Yeah, so the first point in this uh, checklist is uh, fulfilled. Uh, so how does it work? As you can see, I print uh, hello records, and then uh, I have uh, an instantiate to records we, uh, we saw, I mean this complex numbers, right? So this is one complex number, this is another complex number, and then I can do some uh, crazy stuff. I can also uh, print this uh, record. So how does it work? We go to this complex uh, record. I mean, if I hit the correct button, sorry. Uh, okay, um, so I could actually, for time being, get rid of this. Right, and this is the record you saw in the slides, right? So it's basically, it has this real part, this imaginary part, and it has this record here instead of class, basic, right? So this is uh, somewhat uh, odd. And now what I can also do with this record is I can add some custom methods which I think, by design, belong to this record, right? So they are not doing some crazy stuff about any other data pass as, I don't know, arguments, or something like this, uh, they make sense because they operate on the components of uh, this uh, record, right? So I can have a add method because I can add two complex numbers, right? I can subtract them, I can multiply them, and this is how uh, it works. Now let me comment out the to string method and let's run it again. And what you can see here, hopefully, yeah, is just we have now uh, the, the records displayed or printed out by default, right? So this is how the default toString method works. We have this method uh, it, it, for, for, for granted. I mean, we have it generated for us. We don't need to override it or something like this. And as you can see, it's not like some, I don't know, some gibberish, gibberish, like some, something that doesn't make sense, you know, like memory address or something. It actually makes sense. As you can see, it's the name of the record. Then for every component, we get the value, and so the list continues. Right? It's just, I don't quite like this way of displaying complex numbers. I mean, at the, at the university, I was uh, th uh, thought that this is perhaps a better way to describe the, uh, uh, the complex numbers. Right? So I have the real part and imaginary part followed by uh, lowercase i. So as you can see, I can easily override a method, a method if I don't like the default um, implementation. This is how it works. And then, as you can see, I have basically uh, just one instance, another instance, two objects. Uh, here I'm creating another one because they are immutable, and so on and so on. And here I'm printing it out. And if you happen to have, I don't know, like a technical interview or something like this, uh, please remember that record is not a keyword, as some would say, because, for example, enum is a keyword. See, something like this doesn't compile, but you can even see it's blue. Can you see it's blue? Yeah, it's blue, right? Uh, whereas record isn't blue. So record is not a keyword, just as var is not a keyword, right? Enum is a keyword in, uh, in Java. Okay, uh, so this is about base, like the introduction. Let's go for uh, some basics uh, right now. And again, uh, this code should run. Let's see if it runs. Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. So let's analyze it briefly. I mean, I'm I wanted to show you it runs so you can, if you find me talking too fast or something like this, you can always uh, refer to this code. Uh, but let's uh, do what records or check what records uh, can do, what they are, what they are, um, what, they are, what are the possibilities, sorry, for the record. So as you can see, record can have no field, right? Or record might have just one field or one component, right? We can have generic records. So as you can see, I have a record keeping something that's serializable and something that is a number. Right? And I can have this C here, it's like serializable and, and number here. Right? And then I can have custom methods, and you can see I can have print hello and say hello to, to whomever I want to. It's just, I would say, this is not a good design. Right? S things you see in this very demo is not that what you should do, it's just what you can do, like technical possibilities right? uh, within the boundaries of, of the specification and so on. Uh, so I would say this method shouldn't belong to this record because it doesn't operate or doesn't refer to these components. Right? Technically, still it's possible, basically. And of course, we can have static fields and static methods, and they should be all printed here. Uh, as you can see, 
this hello stranger, and then we are printing uh, this foo, and so on and so on, right? So everything is called. And we can also can have uh, so-called mutable fields, right? And then I can have a method which is not assigning something new to this private final field, but something that is actually modifying it. And then I would, so, well, I would say it's not a good candidate for record again, because it's, it, it's not immutable data. Yet, it's, it's possible to have something like this, right? Uh, so I would rather discourage you from, from such uh, usages. And of course, we can overwrite uh, to string, just as you saw. Maybe I could, like, uh, oh, I don't have my num keyboard, so I don't know how to extend. Oh, yeah, like this, right? So as you can see, I can extend uh, you know, to string, sorry, overwrite the to string methods. And I can do also uh, the same with equals and hash code. Uh, just Remember Java's 101, when you overwrite equals, you, can, you have to overwrite uh, hash code and vice versa, right? They, can, they need to have, uh, like, to go uh, hand in hand. Uh, so if you find it, like, you need to change the default contract because the, because the default contract is that every field or component from record is taken uh, into account in equals and hash code. So if you uh, need to, uh, like, uh, I don't know, limit that or, or do, do whatever you need to do, uh, then it's still possible, right? So we can overwrite um, equals and, and uh, hash code. Um, we can have custom accessors. I mean, and now we see what the accessor actually is. It's like a getter, only without the get, is, was, has been, should be, and whatever prefix you have, right? And just let me remind you that Java beans is not a formal specification. It's more like, a, I don't know, set of rules, something like this, right? They were meant for this UI thingies, components, drag and drop, building user interface, and so on. Uh, right? We just happen to use them for, uh, for like data carriers, for example. And now we have something which is called accessor. So it doesn't have, it shares exactly the name with the component, right? Uh, and it doesn't have this prefix, and it re returns exactly the same uh, type, right? and shouldn't do anything. And if by any chance you need to have like side effect, I don't know, to log it out or something like this, you can still override this accessor. But m please keep in mind, this accessor needs to behave, needs to obey its, uh, its contract. And the fact uh, that the accessor exists here and has exactly this name and signature is actually specified, unlike to all these uh, getters we had. Uh, we have in, in Java Beams. Uh, what we can also do, we can have custom canonical constructors. Right, so as, as you can see, I have this uh, complex uh, record with four components, and I want to assert that the first is different than the second, and the third is different than the fourth one, right? Uh, so I can do something like this, right? And then I need to reassign them, and this is just for uh, demo purposes, so this one get, got called, right? And now, it has officially, it has never been uh, a purpose for uh, records to uh, like uh, combat the boilerplate. Right? Yet we have the accessors generated for us, uh, constructors, two string, hash code equals. So de facto, there is much less boilerplate, as you have seen with this uh, complex. Right? Um, and when you take a look at this, you may say, OK, but still, it's kind of a you know, verbose code. Right? So just to actually have, this is a kind of my like, business logic. Right? So why do I have to repeat these steps? Uh, and actually, we don't have to because this is the full canonical constructor. It can, we can go and override the canonical, like the short or compact, sorry, the name is compact uh, canonical constructor. So as you can see, I can only have these assertions here. I don't need to go for this uh, repeated list, right, of arguments, or I don't have to, like, uh, have these assignments. So we can have this compact canonical constructors if you really need them. So as you can see, still there's less and less plate, And of course, uh, what we can also have, we can have other constructors which aren't canonical, neither full nor compact. Uh, as you can see, something like this. So let's say we want to keep the length and the hash of a string. Uh, so we can just might have a constructor with a string, right? And of course, it won't work with hash code. And why doesn't it work with hash code? Any guesses? I can hear you. Uh, not set about accessor, yes. Uh, who said that? Yeah, so Jerry, it's for you, sir. Oh, sorry. Almost, almost. 
yeah, that's, that's true. We would need to have hash code accessor, and that basically means that there will be a clash between the accessor right, and the hash code method uh, from object class. Basically, that's why it cannot be called hash code. All right, so let me go back. And um, yeah, the custom constructors can be less visible than the record. Please keep in mind that this is like package default, and this one is private, right? And uh, we can also implement interfaces. As you can see here, I'm implementing the comparable, right? So I need to uh, add the compare to methods, and uh, we can also override the um, uh, accessors or Basically, any method I overwrite can now, since Java 15, I believe, can also have this override annotation, right? Even though there is technically no method you overwrite, I mean, you can't jump to a method in a super type, right? In, in record, there is no method called A, yet we can keep this override uh, here if it's generated by uh, IDE or something. It will still work. So this is what you can do with records. What we can't do, uh, like the limitations of records should be here. Okay, so what we can't do is they cannot extend any class, uh, right? And by the way, extending Java UL today would be extremely stupid, I would say. Uh, and they can also be extended. This also doesn't compile. They cannot have any super duper private fields which aren't listed in this list of components or header, if you will, right? They still need to be uh, listed. I mean, everything has to be here. That's why they're called transparent. They're not hiding anything. Right behind the scenes, or, or I don't know, in in a back office or whatever, everything has to be exposed uh, to the clients of this code. They cannot have anything like a setter. So you, you might say, okay, if I have accessor, which is like kind of a getter only without this get prefix, maybe I should have accessor. Sorry, like setter the same way. No, sorry, it doesn't work because this field is immutable, right? And we can have, of course, this uh, method, but it won't mutate anything, or at least it uh, it can't, uh, right? Uh, so we can't also have any native methods, right? As I, as I told you, and uh, the when we override the canonical constructor, uh, which is like a compact one in this case, it can it cannot be less visible than the record itself. If you need like a more or less exposed, uh, less visible constructor, then you have to go for a custom uh, constructor which doesn't share basically the list of the arguments with the uh, record header. Basically, right? So uh, this and also in compact constructors, we cannot give any uh, or reassign a value of the of the field. This is also to uh, you know prevent us shooting our uh, food. And uh, yeah, and we also need to keep exactly the same list of um, the, even the same names as uh, as in the records header. You see, I have. B A R E B A R here in you know, like uppercase, so I cannot go for lowercase here, right? I need to go for a big bar, so to say, and then it compiles. Of course, it doesn't work here and so on. But this you 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 get the idea, right? So they are very precisely specified, I would say. Um, and of course, records cannot be abstract. Why they cannot be abstract? Because they are always implicitly final. So if you want to write final. That's fine, but it won't change anything. Yeah, so it's no, there is no point in declaring records as, fi as final. They are always final. All right. So let me go jump to the slides quickly. Okay, nesting records, because we covered what records are, right? What they can do, what they cannot do. Now the question is, how should I use them, or where should I use them? Or What's the, the best way to use them? What's the purpose, right? When should I think, okay, I should use a record, or should I have record for this? Something like that, right? So records are extremely useful when nested, okay? Uh, and in, they are nested just like uh, static classes, and they are very handy, like these local records for streams, like these uh, like, uh, like intermediate uh, accumulators, for example, for uh, collectors, for reduce method, and so on and so on. And uh, as a byproduct of that, uh, starting from Java 16, we can also have uh, local interfaces and enums and uh, classes, not only records. So uh, let me show you that. I should also have a demo for that because in code we trust, right? Uh, okay, let me find a demo for this. So we have this nesting, okay. Yeah, so as you can see, they behave 
as if they were static class, right? So I cannot refer to a field in the enclosing class because record, uh, like enclosed record, is a static class. And to prove it, you can see here static class behave exactly the same, behaves exactly the same, right? So that's why they act as a, or like a, or are de facto static classes. Sorry. Uh, let me uh, roll back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we might have, as you can see, please keep attention here. See, we are inside method, right? This is main method. And inside this method, I can declare a record, an enum, an interface, and a class, right? So they are visible only in scope of this method from here till the end of this method. Right? They are not visible in any other method or class or whatever. They are local, therefore. And the, when they become useful, for example, I have this little uh, demo uh, when I show how uh, team collectors work since Java 12. And in Java 12, we needed uh, like a, I say it, binish class because it's not like even proper Java bin. We have two uh, fields like right, uh, public fields, I have a constructor, and I have to string method just to see how things work here. And let me run this. Okay, uh, running, running, running. Thankfully, it wasn't indexing. Uh, and what do, you, what, do you, what do you see here? We have a stream, right, and we have a stream of uh, numbers. And what we want, we want to have a sum and count of these numbers. Only I don't want to do it twice, like process um, two streams, two separate streams, right? Uh, so I can go for this reduce method or I can go for a team collector. So in one pass of this single stream, I can both count the numbers and I can summarize them, right? And to have you see this, uh, uh, this accumulators and so on and so on, I need to have like this intermediate type, which is this count and sum, right? Uh, and they print me like 190 and 20. It's just for such a relatively simple operation, I needed that many lines. And as you can see, it wasn't that much of a Java bin, right? And I still didn't need to generate equals, hash code. What if I had to generate them due to whatever reasons? Because let's say I, would, uh, I, were keeping, uh, I was keeping that in a set or something like this. So we don't need this because from now on, we can just go for this single line. See, again, we are inside a method. So this is a local record. And I have this accumulator, a tuple, a named tuple, basically. Right? And now I'm using here in all these operations. I have these constructors generated for me. I have this two string generated for me so I can uh, uh, see it uh, printed here. Right? And this is how it works. Let me run this code again. And results should be exactly the same. And yes, they are. Right? You see? So although there is no official war on boilerplate, and uh, now instead of such long data carriers, we can have something much, much shorter and easier to read and understand. And it's not only following a convention, but it's also following strict specification, right? Uh, and we'll get to that why it's important just in a minute. Okay, uh, reflection of uh, records. Uh, Unfortunately, I can't use anymore this tweet from Sergey Egorov because it got uh, deleted, I mean, this video. Uh, it's just, it means when you are using reflection of, on the records, it means, at least I would judge it in nine times of, out of 10, that you are misusing records, okay? Uh, only um, maybe sometimes like, I don't know, uh, some library maintainers or something like this, this make, uh, can make sense, but not for like, uh, let's say, uh, client code, so to say. Nevertheless, we have two new methods. Uh, in, in a class, we have a method isRecord, pretty similar like isInum. So we can call on the class isRecord, then we know it's record. Uh, and then we can get an array uh, of the record components, giving us the type of the, of the component, uh, the name, and uh, hence we also have the accessor and, and so on, right? So if you need to get uh, into that, it's, uh, it's possible. Uh, so it's not working without any uh, bigger issues. I also have a demo here. Uh, reflection. Uh, yeah, let me just shortly run it. Yeah, and basically it's it proves. I mean, 
I'm not going to analyze this code. What it does basically uh, is just I'm getting, so here I get the record components, and then I go for the scribe bin properties because I get the bit info uh, of an object, and I pass two objects. One is uh, Java bin and one is uh, Java record, right? And as you can see, when I'm passing, uh, when I'm passing, the property, when I have the property descriptors and or bin info, right, for bin with setters, I have following properties. I have uh, here, uh, la, 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 la. Uh, I have uh, the ID, right, and uh, which is UID, and I have another which is string field, and I have for this uh, uh, so-called read method, which is our getter here, as you can see, and I have write method, which is a setter. Right, and I when I reconstruct and ha or have the same, uh, or you know, and this is this bean, right? So it got described by a Java library, and then uh, when I do uh, something similar only with uh, with a record, where do I have you, Mr. Record? Um, yeah, this uh, reflection check. See, this is it's a record. When I, when we analyze this, then uh, this whole thing becomes much, much shorter because the only method that seems to be a getter in a record is, no surprise here, get class, right? So this is again a proof to you that record is not a Java bin. It's just a pojo, right? You need to start thinking about records in a slightly different way. Uh, okay, annotations. So annotations get nicely propagated. When we annotate the record, uh, the annotations get propagated when they should be. So uh, when the target type is, for example, method, then they will be propagated to accessors. When it's constructor, it will be unconstructor, and so on and so on. There is demo for you as well. If you uh, need really to check it, please run this annotation uh, propagation. Uh, and let us go for serialization of records, because we in Java have this bad habit of serializing data. right? So things are a little bit different when it comes to records um, because they are reconstructed using the constructor. So we don't have a new weird method now called, you know, in the, you know, somewhere in the cycle to have this object reconstructed for us or this serialized. We just have them reconstructed using um, uh, constructor. Uh, so let's go here for serialization. And again, you see, I have a bean, right? I have a bean. Let me lower this. Uh, right. So we have a uh, just a bean which is serializable, right? And we have a record, and this record is also uh, serializable. It has to implement serializable. I mean, records aren't serializable by default, right? You need to implement the serializable interface. Um, and when we run this short demo, you can see one thing. Uh, you can see one thing because let's investigate this record, right? You see, I added this um, uh, this print line to see that we are actually inside the constructor, right? So as you can see uh, here, let's go here. So we are creating the record. Uh, here we are serializing this record. This is these are the actual bytes, and I'm printing it here because you can see that the format of the serialized bytes is also slightly different. I mean, if you kept comparing the numbers, and then when I'm deserializing this object, you can see that we are creating record for ABC, right? So this constructor is being called when record is deserialized using Java native serialization, deserialization mechanism, right? And we don't see anything like that for, for the bin, because here we have the bin, we have serialized it, we see the examine the bytes, right? And then we are deserializing the object, and it gets there, so the constructor wasn't called, right? So the, there's, there's a change when it comes to this binary format. Now, I bet you know the other format we kind of uh, borrowed, if not to say stealed, from the JavaScript community, I mean this other Java community, right? Uh, when it comes to uh, serializing and deserializing data to be more human friendly, it's called JSON. Unfortunately, we know it, right? Okay, so we have this bean, and the, we, I'm using Jackson, as you can see, I have this object mapper, I have this serialization bean check, right? And uh, yeah, so let me go something like this and something like this, and when we have something like this, this is if you can like 
pen pay attention for two seconds. This is uh, a Java bin, which looks like a Java record because it doesn't have the getter, right? It doesn't have the getter. I have the, the method which, which, which looks just like accessor because the getter is commented out here, right? So uh, when I try to run this code, what will happen? I'm afraid it won't work. Because by convention, J Jackson expects this to be like Java bean, to have like, you know, getters and setters and so on, it tells us that it failed on the empty beans, right? So we may perhaps need a custom serializer. And now we can go for a custom serializer and deserializer, or we can do something instead, so we can start using annotations. Uh, whether that's good or bad, that's another story. We can start using annotations, so what we can do? We can, or we can, for example, go for a getter, like, right? We can implement the getter. Um, but would, that would be a bit, like we'd say, um, you know, over design when it comes to records, uh, right? So this works, but still we are not able to um, fully serialize and deserialize uh, our bean because, again, it will fail because now it needs to have like deserializer, and so the story continues, right? So maybe the getter is an option, so maybe we can annotate this accessor-like method, and maybe we can annotate the constructor, and things uh, should work. Hopefully they will work. Right, okay, they work. So how do we do that with, uh, with the record, right? So here I'm trying to repeat the same logic only with the record, so serialize it to string, then deserialize it from this uh, JSON string, right? Let's run it again. And uh, indexing, indexing, okay, it doesn't work. All right, and what we can do, we can then go for this JSON property, and you saw that just a slide or two uh, ago that then this property, sorry, this annotation will get propagated, and so the story goes, right? And thing should work because now it's annotated just as the uh, Java bean, or almost the same way, right? It's just, I told you a few minutes before that records are actually a specified way for carrying or passing the data, right? So if they are specified, why do we need this? I mean, this, is, this feels so wrong, basically. And Thankfully, we don't need that. What we need to do instead, we have to go to our uh, POM, which is, uh, let me see if this, yeah. And we need to bump our dependency of Jackson because since version 2.12, Jackson recognizes records. They did that even for Java 14, right? So now, when we try to, uh, let me get rid of this like, altogether, right? Sorry, uh, this. And we can even get rid of this because we don't need it. It was only a side effect. C here, right? So let's run this code again. And C, now the record was serialized to, Jack, to JSON, and now it's also deserialized. And I don't need any pesky annotations. I don't need anything. I don't need any conventions or dancing around it. We just know what record is. It's a standardized form of passing data, of carrying data. Hence, the Jackson knows how to use it, right? Because they call this class is record. Oh, it's a record, so I know what to expect. I expect the full uh, canonical constructor. I expect the, the accessors and, and so on and so on, right? This is how it works. And this is the thing that we perhaps were missing in, uh, were missing in Java, like the standard way of handling or passing data. So all the other libraries need to adapt to, to this and need to start handling records exactly this way. Right? So as you can see, everything, I mean, the dots hopefully start to, connecting, uh, to connect each other, right? So we, have, we don't even need these annotations. Uh, the library it make, it makes proper usage of, uh, of the knowledge that this is a record, so they are using records properly, and so on, and so on. Uh, yeah. So one, you just saw one library already adapted to that. Spring, uh, like Spring, since Spring Boot 2.5, also uh, adapted to records. I mean, maybe not in all places, but at least in some. Right? And one more thing. For records, we don't have anything like a copy method, like you might be familiar with uh, from Scala, for example. Right? We don't have any widths or withers uh, like we do have in Lombok. 
so the way to do that basically is uh, call the constructor again. So this is what we do. We just call the constructor and we, you see, go for the uh, first or second, right? So this is how we copy record, fortunately or, or not. Uh, that's why the equals and hash code methods needs to be need to behave and and all these accessors and so on and so on, right? Yeah, uh, records work also nicely with other features uh, from new Java versions, uh, so they support pattern matching with instance of of course. Uh, they go very nicely with sealed character keys. I, I will show you that in the next session. Uh, and the, in the future, uh, they should also support pattern matching with deconstruction out of the box. Uh, let me just uh, show it to you here um, briefly. Yeah, so we have these other features, right? Uh, okay, uh, so as you can see, I have a sealed interface of type bird or called bird, and I have a duck and I have a chicken, and they're both birds. So as you can see, uh, records work very nicely because they are final, so I don't, I don't even need to put final here. Right, uh, and then we can go and use them in this uh, pattern matching with instance of, uh, for example, and so on and so on. Uh, so in the future, we should also see uh, them being used. Like I don't know if you're familiar with Scala, for example, but in Scala we have the concept of deconstructors. So there's a method called unapply, which turns uh, basically uh, the object we give into the list of these fields or components uh, back. Right, so we, we expect to have that in Java uh, as well. Uh, right, so if you're interested, if you'd like to read more on records, like for example, how to use Lombok on records, I know it's stupid and I wouldn't recommend using that, but there is more on my blog if, you, uh, if you'd like to uh, do that, uh, or like some comparisons with uh, further comparisons with Lombok and so on. Uh, okay, let me just show you um, because we have a few minutes left uh, and uh, yeah so when it comes to equals right sometimes there's a question is then the, the hash code of a record is it cached or not um, I actually I can't fully answer this question yet you can see I'm creating a list and then I passing the list to record and then I have the same list here and then I'm iterating over this list making it like a bigger one uh, and so on and so on and as you can see here because I have in this print hashes so I'm printing the hash code of the record and the uh, and the hash code of the list that's inside the record and the list itself so as you can see if the list changes its hash code changes and so changes the hash code of the record right so even if it's even if it is cached, then the cache is invalidated when it should be, right? So this is the uh, the answer, right? One thing, and the other thing when it comes to uh, this equals, uh, maybe a little game. I mean, we are not in a basement, and I don't have a saw, but maybe you still want to play a game. So. Let's say someone gave you a requirement. You, I don't know if you're as old as I am, but in Poland we used to have these sweet chocolate bars, kind of like sneakers, and they were called record, right? So let's say you need to, you need to produce and distribute these uh, sweet bars, uh, like, you know, let's say worldwide. And in the record, uh, in, the sweet, in the single bar you keep uh, when it was created, as a kind of, let's say, ID or something like this, or timestamp, and then you keep the location of uh, like the, the hubs it was transported, I mean from the producer till the um, uh, like a final uh, shop uh, or store because we need to keep tracking of this, right? And this is of course bad design. Uh, and let's say uh, that we have, uh, we have put these uh, records, these two bars into uh, a box, right? And then for each bar we append one more location. So the question is, if someone by mistake adds these bars again to this box, how many bars do we have in our box? I mean, what's going to be printed here? Your answers. Who said two? Okay, any other guesses? Four. Who said four? Okay. Someone for three? Three and a half? Okay. Let's, let's see then. Let's see then what happens. Four. And why four? 
I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? We expect two because we instantiated just two bars here. Right? It's just we made something stupid. We are keeping a mutable thing in our record, and hence the hash code changes everything we mutate this thing. That is why this hash set gets crazy. Because when we add these bars again, it doesn't have the hash codes of these bars at this very moment because they changed here. That's why we have four and not two. Will you pass it to your colleague as well? Uh, almost, sorry. Yeah, so that's, the, so that's the thing. So the first thing you should do, in my opinion, is we, sh we should get rid of this mutable thing, right? And if we still desperately need this mutable thing here, then we have to overwrite equals and hash code are our own, right? And maybe I could show you another thing. Uh, let's go for a little uh, demo. Yeah, okay. So there are also these questions if... Oh, it works, cool. Yeah, you see it, okay. There are also these questions if uh, records can be used as JPA slash Hibernate entities. Right, so we have this entity bean, and you you know it like yeah right entity immutable. It can be even immutable. Then you have ID and so on. So maybe we could have a record acting as an entity. Oh gosh, it started indexing. Oh no. So the answer is here for you. It won't work because JPA entities by default need to be mutable need to have a so-called default constructor, meaning a constructor without any argument, right? And this is something you won't have with, with a record, and uh, the fields are mutable, and so on and so on, right? So even if we do something like this, it won't basically work, because it should have, as you can see, no arg constructor, and so on and so on, right? So it won't work. Uh, however, as you can see, I can have something like this, and it compiles. So what's the trick? Any guesses? Any wild guesses? Yeah, I cheated a bit. I'll show you why. It's not JPA. I'm using Morphia here, right? I'm using Morphia, uh, which is an ORM uh, for MongoDB, basically. Uh, so it doesn't have this constraint uh, like uh, JPA entities. So we can use entities which are immutable uh, classes, and they can uh, it, like work with, or it can work without uh, like no arc constructors. So even if you don't trust me, if you don't believe me, I have this Morphia test, right? So as you can see, I'm creating instantiating Mongo here, and I am saving not only the bean but also the record, and then I query the database to find if it really has this 14 from bean and 15 from a record. So let me run this test. Uh, okay, it will take a while. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's okay. It's basically okay. All these assertions, assertions passed, and we call it like real MongoDB uh, below. So as you can see, the answer is it depends. I mean, the answer to the question, can record be an entity? It depends on your uh, ORM, basically. Uh, so that's, that is the answer. But you can use records also in other places. Let's say, uh, are you familiar with this? Post mapping response, uh, you know it, yeah? Spring, right? You know it. Of course, we know it, right? Now we have this request body and we have this response, right? And let's see what, what this uh, endpoint does. It's a really dummy thing. Uh, it takes the first thing uh, and, and makes it uh, uppercase, and it takes the second thing and uh, like, uh, makes like uh, to the power of two, right? So squares it. Okay, and now see. This record is a, sorry. This request is a record, okay? Because usually, what was the last time you mutated your record? Sorry, your request, your endpoint, your REST endpoint. Exactly, right? So there is no problem with this uh, request being uh, a record, right? And so is uh, for the response. It's also a record, right? So let me uh, run this thing. Uh, let me run it. Where do I have this application? Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. 
sorry. Yeah, let's run this thing. Mm -hmm. Finished saving. OK, it should be running. So now let me uh, go for this uh, curl. Uh, terminal, paste. And as you can see, I received it uppercased and squared. So you can use records as requests and responses in uh, Spring, for example, for your, um, for your uh, uh, endpoints, right? It only requires, only requires, let me find it, let me find it, yeah, or something above, right? This is a uh, Spring Boot uh, starter, right? So it also like for Spring Batch, and, and, and you have a Spring Batch demo here as well, so for other uh, things. So as you can see, more and more libraries are adapting to records and start using it as a proper uh, thing. Yeah, so more on records here. Uh, please remember to provide your feedback, uh, not only for me, not only for this presentation, but for every uh, presentation and for every speaker, right? It really matters to us how we can improve our talk, uh, talks and our skills. Uh, I, today, I'm happy because I can even accept it as a paper form. Okay, uh, so thank you very much, Jinkui uh, Barzo, for your presence here. This, uh, I mean, the links uh, to the uh, to the code uh, uh, slides are here, and if you need it, there's a link uh, repeated. Uh, I'm not sure if we do have time for a question or two. Let's say we do have. Uh, do you have any questions? Or everything is clear so far? Okay, so it looks like everything is clear. And if you still happen to have some questions, don't hesitate to ping me on the, on the corridor. Or uh, you can also DM me on Twitter or uh, Telegram. And I hope to see you uh, at the next session when I will be talking about new stuff in Java 15, 16, and 17. Thank you very much.